to show you some of the uh, different text inputs that are available on S65th edition. One of the things that I really like about this new update is that there's um, several different ways that you can input text based on whatever is more convenient for you, whatever you're most comfortable with. So to do this, we're going to start a new um, text message. It is probably the best way. So here's the messaging here. And you've got any, any number of options. You've got a new message, um, an inbox, mailbox, all this kind of thing. Um, now one thing that I did want to show you also is, because um, it was asked, is what happens when you receive a text message? So um, what I can do hopefully, if the SDK is cooperating, I can send myself a message, um, send a text message. So this is going to pop up on the screen. And um, what I can do is click on this to open the message. If I exit for whatever reason and ignore that, later on I can click on the envelope up top here and I can see the time, I can see um, that I've got a data connection and I can click on the new message to go to that message. So very convenient, this is the message text. It tells you the time and date that it was received up here, which is very convenient. Um, and one less step as opposed to other versions. So I can now um, forward this message here. Um, pretty easily. I can now add a contact. I can go ahead and send it or I can um, attach a file. So first of all we're going to show you the text input. Um, obviously you've seen this screen already in a previous video. So this is a regular multi-tap um, actually off the note. There we go. This is a regular multi-tap um, display. You can do J O you know just as you're, to, as you're used to and that was a bad field to do it on. Let's go here. So we can eliminate that and you can use this as um, standard multi-tap. So by deactivating the predictive text now I can do John. If you're more comfortable with that, you can also um, activate predictive text and this works just like a regular T9. So now I can type um, John Smith is cool. Um, and it works just like a regular phone. Very convenient. And what I can also do is uh, click here for keyboard mode and I can do a mini QWERTY keyboard. And this is going to pop up on the screen here. And what's really neat about this is if you use this button here, you can drag this up and down the screen. So this is really convenient if you type in a long message and it gets to where it's behind the keyboard, you just move the keyboard up and start typing below it. And that can go all the way up and down the screen. So that's um, something I was really impressed with. And this does not have predictive text built into the keyboard, but um, you can obviously click pretty easily um, as far as that goes. I would like to see in the future um, this to have predictive text kind of like the E71 does. That would be very, very nice. Autocomplete um, would be something I would really like to see. So as of right now, it does not do so. And you can drag your finger as well. So if you click on the wrong one, you need to drag over a couple, you can do that as well. And it's not a big deal. So um, from there, you can also do the handwriting recognition. And the pen input is not supported on this phone. But you can kind of see what it would look like. So you would write here. Um, and again, this is the emulator, so a lot of the features aren't going to be fully, um, fully supported. but. This is where it is, and again, with the handwriting tech, uh, recognition, is it's um, transparent, so you can drag it around and even write directly on where you're currently typing. Um, so very convenient, and then um, you can also do the full screen QWERTY, but with this emulator, it's going to mess it up. So um, actually, I can show you that right now. Okay, and so in um, landscape mode, as you can see, we have a few more options. The buttons have been moved to the side. Since you're holding the phone um, lengthwise, it's a little bit more, you're going to have your thumb over here anyways. So now we have the same input methods available that we had previously. We have a regular um, text input where we can type in multi-tap. Um, actually, this has predictive text going. So I don't know, Tom, we're just typing random things. You can also click here to deactivate prediction and that sort of thing. If you click here, you can do the full screen QWERTY keyboard. 
and this obviously gives you um, larger buttons, and but it looks exactly pretty much the same as the regular one. And again, this does not have any predictive text, um, but it does allow you to drag over if you click on the wrong button initially. And um, as you'll notice, it does automatically capitalize first letter, but it does not capitalize like an I in the middle of the sentence. So Nokia really needs to work on that um, text input as far as being able to automatically correct different typing. So um, that's, the, that's the main keyboard. You can also still use the mini QWERTY keyboard um, in this view. And again, as always, you can drag it around. So um, it's more like a widget than anything else as far as the, your ability to place it around the screen. Um, it's very flexible. You can um, really put this thing wherever you want it to, and it works just fine. So, um, and then the same, obviously, with the uh, handwriting recognition. It's going to be the same thing. It's still not going to support it on the emulator, but you can still drag it around and that sort of thing. So, um, big fan of that. I really like how um, Nokia S60 made this um, as many options as possible. I mean, you can use the QWERTY keyboard in any screen. You can use the T9 predictive text in any screen. Anywhere that there's a text entry, you can use any one of the um, numerous um, text inputs. So um, I really, really like that. I think that's really well done um, as far as giving people options.